Hmm. Let's see what we've got in comments section. What people have suggested. What could I do? What could I see? Moonraven again. On the back of Conan's tavern is the entrance to a dungeon. Entrance to a dungeon. Damn, Moonraven, I had different plans for this episode. Anyways, hello guys, um, I definitely had something different in my mind for this episode and don't get me wrong, especially you Moonraven, I, I don't mean it as a bad thing. I am super grateful that you have suggested me to go and find this area. Uh, this was an epic journey that I have experienced and I will be definitely sharing it all with you guys. Um, I wasn't just expecting to have this form of fun at this point in this game, so yeah, let's just dive in. On the side note, there is quite a few of you guys that gave me ideas down in the comment section about things to do, places to see, dungeons to experience, and if I will be going to do them, visit them, obtain them, you get the gist. I will definitely give you a shout out. I will say who gave me an idea about it, who made me aware of it. The only reason I feel like this is the right thing to do is that in my head, which my head might be dumb, um, in my head it feels like if you spend your own time to give me an idea or even share it with, well, all of us, not just me, all of us that can read the comment, I feel like it's a good thing to honor your choice because you've done it for all of us. You didn't keep it for yourself. So that's why I feel like, you know, in my head, it feels like a right thing to do, to give a shout out to someone who made me aware of it. Anyway, if you if you feel like this is not a right thing to do, please just let me know down in comment section and I will just stop doing this in the future. But for now, I am unaware of this being a harmful thing. So let's dive in into today's wine cellar dungeon. So, you've seen me fighting with Chef the Drunk, and he was supposed to drop the legendary truncheon, but he didn't do it. And then I was supposed to capture these two relic hunters, but I didn't. So, I went in and I was blown away by the proportions of this cave. Well, long story short, I've been literally taking screenshots in this location for another mm, 2, 3, 4 minutes, so I'll just skip ahead. When I was done, I started following this path or trail that led directly to the area with even more relic hunters to deal with. Starting area of this location gave completely different vibe to whatever we are going to experience later on. So you know how it goes, I sent Nock to deal with the problem for me while I take a seat at the back. Once he locked on the target, I picked the same one to speed up the extermination process. When I felt like it's safe to do so, I looked around and found these two loot chests. Then I turned around only to see Nock doing this. Fatality. Even Shelby was in awe. Then I had a feeling that I'm missing something, so I came back and found this carry steel. No clue what it does as of now, but I will get to know in the due time, I guess. I will probably hear from you guys, which always makes things more interesting, because you guys always elaborate on why it does what it does, what is it used for, and in some cases even the story behind it. Anyway, we moved onward towards this single relic hunter, and right next to her there was an age-worn scroll. Also what you can find in this area is quite a few of these carry steel boxes. And I'm saying quite a few because some of them are hidden right here behind this big rock. Moving on, few more relic hunters to deal with. This time we also had a mini boss and not really any carry steel boxes, but few loot boxes that definitely are worth looking at. Right, and these should be the last relic hunters that we will be dealing with for now, so... We had to clear the path and see what's next. This place looks beautiful and intimidating at the same time. I swear this must be one of the best places to get golem parts because I just keep getting them. 
Anyway, as I wasn't entirely sure of what's to come, if I will even make it through the bridge, I just told my followers to stop where they are. So, just in case if I fail, I'll be able to come back and pick them up. And as you can see, I hesitated a few times before I made the final, third jump and made it onto the other side. I still wasn't sure of what's to come and the witch fire torch wasn't really reassuring. And then I've heard these shouts in the background, which just made me GTA fall from there. So what comes next is just me going to my followers telling them, yeah, let's go, we got a thing to do. And, well, we had quite a few different things to do. So we progressively kept clearing out the path, as I knew if I'm gonna fall from here, it's gonna be a fall to death to instant death basically and that's not something I want especially with Nock and Shelby on this side of the bridge so I had to stay on top of things and keep that in mind. This area is full of skeletons, whites and skeleton serpent mans which are the most difficult to fight with and also deal the greatest amount of damage except those crazy skeletons with moles. Once I have noticed that things are getting out of hand really quickly and I narrowly escaped death, I decided to just get out of here and get prepared for this location because I clearly was not ready to take on what's to come. What's the worst thing that could happen in here is that Nock was in some form of a berserk mode and he kept taking on more and more enemies and I could see his health is going lower and lower which wasn't really a good thing. I kept calling him in, but he kept ignoring my calls, so I had to get out of here, run as fast as I can, and hope for the best thing to be him and Shelby teleporting right to where I am. In the meantime, I kept checking on them, especially Nock, and I had to heal myself, because if I would get hit even once by that crazy skeleton with the sledgehammer, that would be it. That would be the end of the story for me and potentially for Nock as well. So, when I've noticed there is more coming in, I literally decided to run away. I know, this is not really heroic, but this is genuinely the only option I had. And I can prove it to you by this situation. So, Nock spawned behind me and look at his amount of health. Look at it and tell me this wasn't my only option. He was one shot away from being dead. I am so grateful that he is still with us. Luck was for once on my side. Since I felt the need of much greater follower to be with us, I checked on our thralls and I've noticed that they ran out of gruel, so I had to cook some more for them. And in the meantime, I have noticed that we finally got an entertainer, so I placed her here because we definitely will get some corruption along the way. I came back to the HQ and dropped all of the golem parts. Considering the amount of them that I currently have, it's probably about the time to start thinking about creating one of them and seeing how capable they are in fights. So I cooked up some more yum yum and gave it to our thralls. I really hope that by episode number 20 we'll have someone to fight by our side. Someone capable of boss slaying. Anyway, that wasn't all. I decided to just skip all of them light armor stuff and medium armor. I just jumped straight into heavy armor because I knew with the difficulty that arises from all the dungeons that we start exploring, I won't be able to make it with light and medium armors. Unless they are epic, but I have nothing, so... Slave Forged Guardian Heavy Armor set was my choice and there was no particular reason for why I did that. The only reason probably is it looked okay-ish and that's why I went for it. And we went from 251 armor points straight to 560 which is more than twice and I think that should be enough to keep us going for a little bit longer in these dungeons. But that's not all, we can make it even better, so let's see how far we can go. Right, in the meantime that I was waiting for the uh, armor plating to be done, I colored the red part of our armor because it was a little bit too bright for my liking. And now we've got some upgrading to do. And as per usual, I used the best available at the time armor plating 
and our armor rating went all the way up to 620. Also, as we've got a heavy set of armor which is way better than what we had, I thought that it's also a good time to start using the legendary weapons that we got from previous boss fights. My choice was the Annihilator and it's only because I really like two-handed swords. Then I came back to the cupboard and took Jebel Sag's Prowl daggers to replace my current ancient daggers that are obsolete at this point. And then before I came back to the dungeon I really had to try the recipe for bread. <laughs> Guess who suggested it? Anyway, the only ingredient that I was lacking was the leavening agent as I had seeds and plant fiber. So I came back to the HQ and dropped all of these ingredients into the improved furnace and started baking the bread. Once Danon's bakery was done I've noticed that Annihilator is really really nicely glowing in the dark so I kind of prepared for a picture and I have noticed the blood moon which looked extremely cool in the current setting with the Annihilator at the back. And on that note, I would like to finish this episode, but before you go, I would like to say sorry for my voice in this one. I am not really feeling well, but I shouldn't and couldn't use this as an excuse to not make another video. And if you stayed here till the end, thank you so much for your time. Like or dislike accordingly, drop a comment down below, or even subscribe if you haven't yet. So, I should see you in the next one. Danon out.